Hello everyone, now we will start discussion on the topic air pollution control part 4. In part 1, 2 and 3, we have discussed on the equipment used for the control of air pollution, particularly the particulate matters. Now, in this class, we will discuss on the processes which are used to remove particulate as well as the gas components and we will discuss here and we will discuss here both particulate and gas molecules removal that is scrubbers in which both are removed and the gas molecules removal there are some absorptions, adsorption based methods as well as removal of specific gas components like SOX, NOX and carbon dioxide. So, let us see the wet scrubbers. The basic function of wet scrubbers is to provide contact between the particles, gas molecules and a liquid and the liquid droplets traps the particulate matters and the gas molecules also are absorbed in the liquid. So, this is the mechanism for the separations of the particulate matter and the gas molecules. So, different mechanisms are there and for particulate collection the mechanisms are inertial impaction, interceptions and diffusion at d p below 0 0.3 micrometer diffusion begins to prevail and there are different types of scrubbers like says spray tower it is applicable for large particle size that is 5 to 10 micrometer centrifugal scrubber packed bed and plate column and then venturi scrubbers that is for fine particles less than 3 micrometer so wet scrubbers have some advantages some disadvantages as well. So, advantages are simultaneous removal of particulate matter and gas molecules and effective performance over a wide loading range. Equipment occupies only a moderate amount of space compared to dry collectors such as bag houses. Hazards of explosive dust air mixtures are reduced. Indifference to the temperature and moisture content of gas. Corrosive gases may be neutralized by proper choice of scrubbing liquid and disadvantages are relative high energy costs, problem of wet surge disposal, corrosion problems and very small particles may not be captured. So, this is a spray scrubber. So, water is sprayed here. So, water droplets will form and from this dry gas inlet. So, particles are present here. So, droplets will fall normally the droplets are bigger than the particulates to be removed and then because of different mechanism as you have mentioned that the particles are trapped and false. So, this is the mechanism for the removal of the particulates in this spray scrubber and collection of particles due to inertial impactions and interceptions on droplets and efficiency depends on droplet size, flow velocity of the gas, liquidity to gas ratio and the droplet trajectories and you see it is greater than 94 percent effective for 5 micron particles and greater than 99 percent effective for 25 micron particles. Then in case of centrifugal scrubber, a bank of nozzles is inserted in a conventional dry cyclones. Now, packed bed and plate column you see this is a plate column and this is a packed bed. So, this in this scrubber the gas absorption is facilitated apart from the particulates also the gas molecules can also be absorbed and it is preferred that the particles particles are also be dissolved in the liquid. So, uh, here we are sending the scrubbing liquid and this is our dirty gas and this is our packed bed. So, because of the presence of packed bed good liquid gas interactions and then the absorption is more than the previous one and here also some plate type systems are also available. So, from the top liquid is coming from the bottom dark gas and then gas liquid interaction takes place and then clean gas goes off. So, that way and different types of packing materials can be used like say rasic rings, saddles, coke or broken stone 
and smaller packing increases the efficiency of collection, but its shape does not appear to affect the collection efficiency. Particles should be soluble in scrubbing liquid. So, these are some characteristics of these scrubbers. Now, we will see the venturi scrubbers. So, as shown in the figure you see the dirty gas is coming through this and it is when it is passing through this duct. So, suddenly the diamond the diameter of the duct is reduced. So, that the gas velocity will be very high. So, in this case we will be injecting the liquid. So, liquid droplets will be formed and that there will be difference in the relative velocity of these droplets and the particulates and the particulates will be arrested by this bigger size droplets. So, this is the mechanism and when it is going out from it then there will be another systems for the separations of these particulates and contaminants. So, this is the cyclone system and the gas will be going up. So, there will be some vacuum basically. So, one side we are increasing the speed otherwise very less vacuum is also created. So, the gas will be going up and the particulates will settle here. So, as a slurry we will get in these systems and these systems is much efficient with respect to other scrubbers because of this increase in high velocity into the duct. So, droplets are accelerated in the throat sections and the particles are impacted with the slow moving droplets due to velocity difference. High performance cover for fine particles usually smaller than 2 to 3 micrometer particles high performance is achieved by accelerating the gas stream to very high velocities that is 60 to 120 meter per second and suitable for sticky flammable or highly corrosive particulate matters and collection of particle at diverging sections of the venturi. So, here the collection takes place. Now, we will see how to calculate the scrubber efficiency. As you know that inertial impaction, diffusion, electrostatic phenomena, condensations and agglomerations are the mechanism for the separation of particulates in the scrubber and collection efficiency we can express like this efficiency of scrubber equal to 1 minus exponential minus k l root over psi. So, k is your empirical factor determined by throat geometry and other parameters normally 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and l is the liquid flow rate and psi is that is impaction parameter which can be expressed by this formula c into rho p into d p square into v r divided by 18 mu g d o, where d o is the droplet diameter. The droplet diameter can be expressed by this expression that is 16400 divided by v r plus 1.45 into l to the power 1.5. So, l as we have mentioned that is liquid flow rate and that will be in gallon per 1000 feet cube of gas because this is empirical relationship. So, this unit has to be maintained and d o is will be in micrometer and v r in feet per second. So, v r is nothing but the relative velocity of gas to liquid at throat. So, this is the relationship we can use and c value that constant value that is that is called Cunningham correlation factor already we have discussed when we are discussing electrostatic precipitator. The same expression is used here that is c equal to 1 plus 2 lambda by d p into 1.257 plus 0 0.4 into e to the power minus 0 0.55 d p by lambda. So, this expression so lambda is mean free path of gas molecules. So, we can also calculate the pressure drop that is equal to 5 into 10 to the minus 5 into v r square into l. Now, if we are interested to calculate the scrubber performance and efficiency, then we can use this approach. The collection efficiency of a scrubber can be related with the number of transfer units N t that is equal to sum of C 1 to C 2 d C by C equal to minus L n C 2 by C 1 and it equal to 1 minus C 2 by C 1 that is equal to 1 minus C to the minus N t. So, this is our expression efficiency 1 minus C 2 by C 1 and this expression is again in N t and N t is calculated on the basis of P t, where P t is the is the power consumptions. So, P t is equal to P g and P, P t is equal to P g plus P l plus P m, where P g is the gas phase contacting power, P l is liquid phase contacting power, P m is mechanical contacting power and now, if we see if we want to get the value of p g, p g is again related to this expression 0 0.02 to 
seven four del P A when del P uh, G del P G. So, the del P G is equal to gas pressure loss in centimeter that is centimeter H 2 O and P L can be expressed like this expression that is 0 0.02815 del P L into Q L by Q G kilowatt hour per 1000 meter cube. So, here del P L is equal to pressure drop for liquid input in atmosphere and that is atmospheric pressure and P M is equal to 16.67 into W S by Q G W S equal to net net mechanical power input in kilowatt. So, W S will be subscript. So, this Q G is equal to gas rate in meter cube per minute. So, these different uh, power if we sum up, so that will be the total power. So, total power alpha into that P T to the power beta is equal to N T. So, these expressions can be used to get the value of efficiency as well. And different types of particulate collectors we have discussed like say gravity settler, we have used fabric filters, ESP, we have discussed cyclone separator and scrubbers. So, here we see different collectors are available and their collection efficiency are also available for different gas type like say somewhere we may have coarse dust is there somewhere fine dust and somewhere super fine dust. So, super fine dust that means 50 percent is less than 20 micrometer or say fine dust 50 percent is less than 25 micrometer and coarse dust that 50 percent is less than 90 micrometer. So, different types of gas stream can be used and for that if we see the collection efficiency for different types of collectors that can be obtained by using this graph and A, B, C, D, F, G, H, M, N, P, Q are mentioned here for different types of arrangement. Now, we will discuss on the gas molecules separation or the uh, removal of contaminated gas molecules or harmful gas molecules from the air or any gas stream. So, that can be done by uh, chemical and physical absorption method or physico chemical absorption method. So, some examples are for chemical absorption monoethanol amine M E A can be used, diethanol amine D E A can be used, methyl diethanol amine M D E A can be used and flexor that is hindered amines can also be used and physical absorptions that is selection and rectishol these two are mostly used for the separation of different types of gas components like say uh, acid gases, H 2 A's, C O 2 etcetera. So, this rectishol is nothing but refrigerated methanol and selexol is dimethyl ethers of polyethylene glycol and apart from these sulfenol and emisol are also used for the separation of acid, acid gases and this, this is called the physical and chemical absorption both type of absorption takes place. Now, we will see the comparison of some absorption based methods for the removal of H 2 S and C O 2. So, your M D A it is a chemical selexol your physical method and rectishol these three main methods we will see. So, for M D A method the removal H 2 S is 90 to 99 percent C O 2 less than equal to 30 percent and these are the temperature and pressure requirement and quality of treated gas is also you see H 2 S can be available in the treated gas 10 to 20 ppm volume basis and this is the technology developer and this is the lowest capital cost moderate operating temperature only limited physical C O S absorption takes place. This is one limitation. If we consider selection they are removal efficiency are given here high removal efficiency and C O 2 removal can be variable and temperature and pressure requirement is also given and H 2 S available in the treated gas less than 30 ppm volume basis and these are the technology licenses and higher cost than M D A, but overall system cost including sulphur recovery process and tail gas treating could be more cost effective. And then rectishol you see here refrigerated methanol. So, H 2 S and C O 2 both removal is very high 
and temperature also is very very low, low temperature with respect to other process and pressure is also high. So, it is costly process, but here H 2 S removal you see that less than 0 0.1 ppm volume basis and carbon dioxide several mole percentage to few ppm. So, the quality of gas is very good in this case and Linde is the uh, developer of this technology and this is the highest cost. A minimum concentration of the H2S is required to maintain the activity of the catalyst and uh, high selectivity of H2S over CO2, ability to remove CoS, this can also remove CoS. And if we see the gasification plants around the globe, coal based and other carbonaceous material based, so they are this rectisols and MD methods have been used widely. Then some adsorption based techniques are also available and have been investigated for the removal of the different types of gas components. So, here silica gel, activated carbon, molecular sieve, activated alumina all these have been reported for the removal of the different types of pollutants as mentioned here. Another adsorption based technology is your use of metal oxides like say ZNO, CuO, Cr 2 3, Al 2 3 etcetera. Then these metal oxides can adsorb sulphur compounds. So, say ZNO plus H 2 S it will give us ZNS plus H 2 O. So, relatively lower temperature 315 to 530 degree centigrade the H 2 S gas will be adsorbed here. So, it will be converted to ZNS and this can be further regenerated by applying heat. So, 590 to 680 degree centigrade if we heat again. So, ZNS will be converted to ZNO plus SO2 and this SO2 which is we are getting that can be converted to sulphur or it may be converted to acid, sulphuric acid. Now, we will discuss some specific gaseous pollutants removal from the gas stream like say control of SO2 emission and control of NOx emission and control of CO2 emission. For the control of SO2 or SOx, basically dry method and wet scrubbing methods are used and available. So, the dry methods they use metal oxides normally or it they can also use activated carbon. So, alkalized alumina process, so that is your basic oxides and manganese oxide process. So, sulphur dioxide will react with it it is obvious because sulphur dioxide is acidic gas. So, that will be reacting with these metal oxides and can be removed from the gas stream. And activated carbon waste that is rain left process and waste vacuo process these are also available and we will be discussing on rain left process. Similarly, for wet scrubbing methods in this case lime limestone scrubbing is used. So, some limestone slurry is formed or solution is formed then it is uh, the gas scrubbing takes place. So, it is sprayed and the from the from the top and from the bottom gas is sent and then then the absorption of the gas molecules takes place in this liquid. Magnesium oxide scrubbing that is chemical construction corporation USA they are using well man lord process sodium sulphide is used converted to bisulphide and other flue gas scrubbing dimethyl aniline ammonia etcetera. So, flue gas desulphurization is relatively a very attractive option for the removal of shocks from the gas stream. And now we will see the rain left process. So, in this process this is based on the use of activated carbon. So, activated carbon is produced by carbonization under vacuum at 600 degree centigrade okay, cheap semi coke or peat is actually used. And then here you see flue gas is coming. So, we have stage 1 and coke is also coming from the top. So, we are maintaining the flue gas is coming at 150 to 200 degree centigrade and then we are putting the coke. So, the gas is going out at 100 degree centigrade. So, we need to cool it to this temperature to 100 and 110 degree centigrade 
So, then after this removal of the shocks that the shocks or SO2 is being adsorbed on the surface of the adsorbent that is coke which we are using activated coke. So, that is coming to the regenerator sections the second part where the temperature is maintained at higher temperature that is 380 to 450 degree centigrade higher value. So, by this heater this arrangement is done. So, carbon dioxide SO2 is dissolved and it goes out SO2 is gas for H2 support production and we are getting here the adsorbents. So, that can be screened fines are removed because of these operations heating cycles okay, and this handling some particle size reduction takes place and fine is formed. So, that fines are removed and the rest adsorbent is recycled and some make of coke is also added and it is recycled. So, that way this system works and the socks removal takes place or SO2 removal takes place. For NOx control there are some tricks for the control of NOx. So, first tricks are there to reduce the production of NOx and the second there are some control methodologies for the removal of the NOx from the gas stream. So, for the prevention purpose minimizing the residence time at peak temperature if we do not maintain the gas at peak temperature for longer time. So, then the possibility of NOx formation will be reduced that as you have mentioned that in ambient air also during midday maximum NO2 is produced. So, that way this can be done and reducing the peak temperature again the same and minimizing the availability of oxygen for reactions with N2. So, these are the tricks to control the NOx that is the productions will be or generation of NOx will be reduced. Other methods for NOx control are modifications of operating conditions like low excess air combustion, two stage combustion. So, two stage combustion means we are not providing excess oxygen much. So, that is why the NOx generation will be less and flue gas recirculation again the same same concept the, the flue gas is recycled. So, conversion efficiency is increasing. So, less fresh air requirement will be there and excess oxygen will not be there and inject, injection of water and steam that also helps to reduce the NOx generation and modification of design conditions. So, design conditions if you say the inclined feeding of the fuel or horizontal feeding both will be having different NOx generation capacity and the treatment of effluent gas once the NOx are generated then we have to remove it by the treatment. So, now for the treatment of effluent gas there may be ab absorption based process or may be adsorption based process or may be some catalytic process. So, catalytic like say absorption method lime slurry can be used HNO3 and gypsum and magnesium hydroxide where concentrated NO is recovered and adsorption methods like activated carbon, silica gel, molecular sieves, ion exchange resins, metal oxides. Okay. MN and alkalized ferric oxides can be used for the NOx removal. Catalytic decompositions many metal oxides tried, but no efficient oxide was found, but catalytic reduction is in reality it is mostly used also. So, that uh, catalytic reduction of NOx we see different types of catalyst, we will see different temperature range and we will see different reducing agent. So, for example, chromium promoted iron oxide Fe chromite a temperature range is given here 250 to 340 or 300 to 450 we have reducing agent CO or H2 and for supported platinum temperature range 350 and 300. So, CO and C2 H6 so these are the reducing agent supported copper chromite again the temperature range is given and reducing agent is also given barium promoted copper chromite again the temperature range and different reducing agents are also given. In case of this reduction of NOx there may be two types of reductions one is selective reductions 
another is non selective re reduction. So, selective reductions means NO will be converted to nitrogen only, but non selective both NO2 and NO can be converted to N2, NO2 can be converted to NO and NO can be converted to N2 also. So, in this case it is non selective that means not only NO, NO2 can also be converted. So, this way we can get different reduction processes for the NOx. Now, we will discuss for carbon dioxide emission control. So, here the chilled ammonia system is used for the carbon dioxide removal. So, here the existing SO2 scrubber after the removal of SO2 then the flue gas is cooled and then it is going to CO2 absorption tower and then CO2 is absorbed after CO2 absorption the flue gas is going out and the solvent which you have used for the absorption that is richer in CO2 and it is going for regeneration and solvent will be regenerated, carbon dioxide will be collected and sequestered and carbon dioxide lean solvent is sent here again. So, this solvent is once regenerated it is taking carbon dioxide here and it is regenerated removing the carbon dioxide here and again the solvent is recycled here for the uh, in the absorption tower. So, that way the carbon dioxide removal is possible using chilled ammonia system and in this case CO2 reacts with chilled ammonia 28 percent weight and water 0 to 10 degree centigrade and forms ammonium carbonate or bicarbonate and reverse reaction take place at moderately high temperature and CO2 is separated. So, this is the here this happens and high pressure helps regeneration. So, these process are high CO2 capturing efficiency, low heat of reactions and low regeneration cost, no degradation during absorption regeneration, tolerance to oxygen and contaminations in flue gas and high capacity for CO2 per unit of solution. Now, we will see the air purifier. So, an air purifier or air cleaner is a device which removes contaminants from the air in a room to improve indoor air quality. So, indoor air quality can be improved by using air purifier and air purifier may be active or passive type. In active type basically these devices produces some, some negatively charged ions into the air and causing pollutants to stick to the surface. While the passive air purification unit use air filters to remove pollutants and passive types are more efficient than the active side and air purifiers specially work by sanitizing the air which may include pollutants, allergens and toxins and the most common methods where high efficiency particulate air that is HEPA filter we have already discussed slightly in case of fabric filter we have mentioned this term. So, that HEPA filter is used through which the air is passed and the particulates are arrested here and ultraviolet germicidal irradiation UVGI is another method which is also used for the air cleaning purpose. HEPA filter works by forcing air through a fine mesh that traps harmful particles such as pollen, pit, dander, dust mites and tobacco smoke and UVGI can be used to sterilize air that passes UV lamps via forced air. So, these are the basic mechanism for the removal of the pollutants from the air and for the purifications of the indoor air. So, up to this in this class thank you very much for your patience.